Hey, I had a couple of coaches uh, last week and about two weeks ago, some high school coaches and some of our youth league coaches that uh, actually that in our league that, that we run uh, asked me to explain some of the things on, first of all, how do I get, how do we get some of these kids to do some things that they just can't get their kids to do? And also on that defense, I've been running a, it's not a base defense, but I run a, a specific defense against certain teams that pretty much tears their asses up and, and people have always asked me, hey, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you work that? It's, it really is pretty simple. There's nothing new in football. It's just different ways to approach it. What I find more difficult than anything, and, and look, the only reason I put these videos on is because a couple of coaches or maybe four or five have asked me at all levels, and I put it off, and then I say, okay, I'm going to do it. So I put them together. But I found out about the coaches. If you're copied on this, you don't have to watch this damn video. Don't. I found out that most coaches and most Business manager, the smartest people in the world, and they're not going to listen to anybody. So it don't matter to me if you listen to it or not. Uh, I was like that myself for a long time. But anyway, if you get something out of this, and I think the main thing you'll get out of it if you do listen to it is really how to talk to kids. Uh, I've seen NFL players come down, they're all pro, know the game better than anybody, but they can't get a 12-year-old or 14-year-old team to do anything. Uh, matter of fact, they lose every game. And they go, well, I don't understand. I know all this about football. Yeah, but you don't know kids. So there's a big difference here. So anyway, we're going to talk about kids, how to communicate with them real quick. Then I'm going to go over the uh, uh, what I call gas defense. Gas defense is pretty unique, and we'll go over it real quick. So defense to me is the name of the game. They don't score, they don't beat you. But there's a couple of things before you start coaching defense and putting it into your program that you should know a little bit about. First of all, football is an unnatural game. So we're going to go over natural versus unnatural behavior and how to teach learn behavior versus unnatural behavior because you have to teach people to do crazy things like run full speed into each other so well uh, you think well that's funny no, and it's not funny it really is that's not another game in the world i don't think unless it's boxing where people just assault each other full speed running down the field uh, kind of unnatural but if you don't teach them how to do it you're going to have injuries and you got to find your dogs too dogs like doing that you know some 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 kids are just skill players so anyway we're going to go over what I call whistle pig and, and meerkat defense because that's what most leagues play. I've even seen high school players. Matter of fact, some of the pros, they call it gap defense. So we'll go over that for a little bit. And I, meerkats, you don't know what a meerkat is, look it up. I call them me rats because it's just easier for me to think. Whistle pig, something when I was a kid growing up in North Carolina, they're groundhogs. And, you know, some of my uncles and stuff, they'd go out hunting. And uh, the way they get the groundhog to stand up is they'd whistle. And they kind of look like a pig. And people say they ate them. I ain't never ate one. I think they're kind of cute. I wouldn't ever want to hurt one. But they whistle pigs. You whistle at them if you ever see them in the field and they stand straight up. And we got a lot of whistle pigs out there playing defense. So, of course, cliche, D's attitude. Yeah, 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 I know. It. But, you know, there's only a certain amount of kids that like to play D. And uh, you get you got to find those kids. You just can't substitute a good player in there because a good offensive lineman think he's going to be a D player. No, them attitudes are completely different. The complete personality of a defensive ball player and an offensive ball player are totally different. Trust me. Well, at the youth league, maybe not so much, but yeah, it is. Also, putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we talk about scheme. One of the biggest things is speak their language. I'm going to touch on it briefly because I still hear coaches making these mistakes. I was part of a, a high school group that went out and was going to try to work with youth league coaches and go over some of the schemes that we do. And as the coach, remember, most of your best youth league coaches, and I find a lot of them better than high school coaches, their parents passing through. Some of them may not even play football. They're just volunteers, man. They're doing the best they can. So when these high school coaches and they're talking about the five tech and the three tech and uh, uh, zone blitz and Mike and Meg and Will and dude, you're talking right over their heads and they ain't getting nothing out of it. So you can imagine what a kid is when you start talking that to him. That's just part of it. So when I, you can't see that because of my big ugly mug, but it's supposed you have to have the dogs again, cliche, but it's true. If you want defense, you better find some dogs. I don't care for seven years old. I got a little grandson that will tear your ass up and he ain't but eight years old. He has that dog mentality. You got to find that dog mentality. Somebody is just willing to run you down, run you over, and pop you right in the chin. That is not normal, especially to a seven-year-old or eight-year-old. So you got to find those. If you don't have it, you got to develop it easily because you can very easily make a kid gun shy. That's old Southern talk with bird dogs. So 
real quick, natural, normal, unnatural, and abnormal. Let me tell you something, pals. Look at it this way. Two people running head on each other full speed is not natural. And I say this in my safety uh, classes. You have to teach people how to tackle, heads, on, heads up tackling and all that stuff because it's unnatural. And if it, what happens is, well, I'm going to introduce my kid in high school. Uh, he's not going to play till then. Okay, these kids been playing since eight years. I'm going to tear their ass up because they have been taught how to perform this unnatural behavior. But it, like I said, if you don't teach it the right way, somebody's getting hurt. Remember, there are dogs out there. All right, unnatural. And I call this natural behavior versus learned behavior. Learned behavior is coaching. You coach it up in heads up football. You coach it up in learning. Uh, and coaching has changed a lot, dude. We don't got this, you know, the hitting. Right now, we do more thudding and hitting. And in games, yeah, we're hitting. We're, we're, we're busting noses. But you, you have to learn at a slower level and at a more condensed level. You don't want kids hitting each other at 10 yards apart. I mean, I see this a lot. You don't get anything done. Use thudding. Teach them how to hit. And in game time, the dogs will come out. That, that, all of a sudden, it becomes natural. Kind of weird. But anyway. Also, you don't speak to kids' language. This drives me crazy. When I was a kid and I'm standing in line at the lunch line because I was a hungry little bastard and I'm always wanting to get up to the front of the line, but I wouldn't, I would never cut line. I was just too embarrassed to. But there's a lot of kids that did it. The rest of why are we talking about button in line? Because that's what you're telling kids to do. When a kid would try to bogart or bust up in front of the line on me or anyone else, I'd block him. And you think, well, the kids don't know better than that. No, they don't. Kids will do exactly what you tell them to do. And then you get mad at them because they're doing what you tell them to do, and that's not what you really wanted them to do. So let's think about it. Old Larry here, he's going to bust up in line, and Leron says, hell no, I'm going to block you. All he does is stand in his way, and he tells him, stop, I'm blocking you. <laughs> in a kid's mind, that's what it is. Well, so when you tell that, I don't care if it's a high school team, you're not blocking. And the, and the kid in his mind saying, well, I'm standing in front of him. He ain't getting by. He's not hitting the quarterback. No, but he's tearing that linebacker, tearing that running back up. You're not talking their language. I don't know to this day why they put the word blocking in in football, blocking and tackling. That's dumb. Why don't they call it pushing? Offensive linemen push. Offensive, that's no such thing as blocking. You want to move somebody out of your gap or your hole, you're pushing them out. You're not just going to stand the hole and block him. I bet some of you are going, Russ, is stupid. A lot of you are going, you know, it makes sense. I want my kid to push. I want him to use his arms. You know, the chicken wing thing, remember that stuff? That, that, that's, 100 years ago. Now they use their hands, get up and inside the numbers, do all that weightlifting to push you out of place. And we do a lot of hand work to make sure that we can place our hands properly, yada, yada. But anyway, don't tell people to block. That's stupid. I know you're going to do it anyway. Even I will sometimes. That makes sense. Here's another thing, too. I see coaches do this all the time. They, 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 maybe they played college ball. Maybe they played high school. Hell, maybe they played NFL ball. Well, that little kid you're coaching ain't. I mean, I literally hear this. This is an example. It certainly wasn't this situation here, but it was It was a situation with these same people. The guy says, you're lining up in the wrong. You're lining up wrong. I told you play the five tech, not the three. You are lining up on the nose like a zero tech. What the hell is wrong with you? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with him. He's got an idiot for a coach. That kid don't have a clue what you're talking about, and you're going to yell at him. But you sure as hell impress him, other parents and coaches. But that kid didn't get nothing out of it. You think, I don't have Yes, it does. It happens all the time. Here's another one. See that dude right there? <laughs> this literally happened. Well, not that one. But I, I heard there was coaches always yelling. They, they'll always say, Coach, I don't know who to listen to. All the coaches yelling at me. So I heard one coach yelling, you got to run low. you got to stay low. you got to run low. And the other coaches, get your hands up. Get your hands up. So on the kickoff, so this little kid runs down the field all hunched over with his hands up. All the way down the damn field. You think I'm lying? I've seen everything in you football. And I'm going to tell you something. That was a freshman in high school. He's running down the field with his hands up, all hunched over like, like some kind of damn zombie. <laughs> so kids will do what you tell them to do. And the head coach looks over. What the hell is going on here? And I said, kid's just doing what he's told to do. you got too many damn people talking on the sideline. I bet that happens a lot. All right. Let's get into gap control versus gas. Gap control, dude, if you play gap control, that's good. I mean, if you got the horses that can do it, you really have to be educated, disciplined. you got to really know about football. Gap football doesn't work, in my opinion, real well at the youth level. And I'm not too damn sure it works at the high school level because here's what you wind up with. You need to have your defense attacking, not reading. They get as much damn reading as they want in the library. 
They don't need to be reading on that football field. Now, college, I agree. You got to read. Yeah, you know what? Maybe some really good high schools you got to read, right? A lot of reading will get your ass whipped, all right? You're not a librarian. So we're going to go over gap versus. This is what I call it. You look on your football field this weekend. Tell me, see if you don't see this. You got a bunch of whistle pigs and me rats out there. Because when the ball snap, guess what that defense does? Stands up looking for the ball because that little whistle pig wants to be the hero. He wants to make the tackle. So he's going to stand up and look and see how I can get through there. Dude, I see this at high school level all the time. And you know what the coach is called? That's gap control. No, hell no, that ain't gap control. That's standing up looking for somebody to do something while the offensive lineman tearing your ass up. Offensive linemen are very smart. They're a hell of a lot smarter than defensive players. I play defense, I know. Offense was on the first floor of the dorm. I mean, the second, uh, second floor, we were on the first floor. We were the dummies. They were always upstairs studying. They are very smart, and they're also very nasty. So don't think that the offensive lineman ain't mean and don't think he ain't smart. But one thing they are, they're very organized. They have this OCD syndrome, so something's out of place that really bothers them. So if you line your defense up all the time in the same spot, man, they like that. Because it's organized. They know who to block. I, I get into it. I'll show you. There's another. There's your, there's your mere rats, mere cats, whatever the hell. And when you the ball snapped, I guarantee you, you got defenses that do that. And your defense is getting the ass kicked. And you know what? You may have a special player or two that he can run you down sideline to sideline. I've had a lot of good players that went on to some of them play college ball. And they said, man, he's a great player. You know what? You've never seen that kid take a hit head on. I don't mean lower your head. I mean, take a real smash mouth hit. Stop the guy in the, in the backfield. No, he runs him down from behind because he's going to stand up like a me rat. Look and see where the ball's at and run him down. Well, he's got the speed as a natural athlete to do that. In Little League, that shit don't fly when you get up to the big leagues. Because when you stand up looking, uh, that's bird watching. Somebody's going to clock you. Yep, there you go. There's a whole defense standing up. Yeah, they're looking for that ball. Here's a guy. That's a good athlete there. I'm sure he is. But he is very ineffective standing there looking. You know why? Maybe Tim told him to play gap defense. Maybe he's reading. Maybe he's looking for something beat. I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> he ain't playing football. So that's the difference. Here's professionals. Here's colleges. Then they actually, you know, you got your gaps, A, B, C, D gap, and they're actually, oh, it's in motion. You got to look. These guys are together in high school four years. Now they're college four years. They got time to teach gap defense. They even teach it where it's strike and observe. Well, you know what? Really, in my mind, the way I see that now, I know that's good, and I ain't no college coach. Don't claim to be. But that's just a bunch of damn whistle pigs to me. You see that quarterback sitting there and that running back? Now, what they'll do is they'll drop off. They'll even, they'll even tell you, strike and observe, discard and attack. Well, I ain't much on the observing and, and the discarding. And the, you know, I'm, I'm pretty big on the attack part. But it's it, they, that's just talk. It's just not my style. And if you want to run a base defense, that's cool. But I would have a little bit of mobility in there where the offensive lineman would know where I'm at every time. Like I said, it's a simple game. But they do teach it. Now, in this particular case, this guy has the, the, the team in the green. They have the horses to do this. They're standing them up. They've got everything checked. They're going to discard, and they're going to make the tackle. Most of you little league teams don't got that. Most of your high school teams don't have that. That's where our things are different. I teach gas defense, and it's gap attack. I attack. These kids ain't reading. They know where to go every damn play. And I'm not giving them a chance to read. I don't trust their reading ability. I don't want a bunch of Tolstoys out there writing War and Peace. I want somebody that's going to kick somebody's ass. I want somebody that's going to light somebody's ass up. If they are able to get the ball off, it's a short pass or an interception, or if they just run past and make a terrible, great catch, it's a touchdown. I'll take the odds on me gassing their ass. So anyway, that's our actual team there in the red. Now, do you notice that they all have their heads up in that tackling technique? Learn behavior, pal. You got to do it. But they are 100% attacking, and they are some dogs. They, my, my boys will come through that line like 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 a bunch of damn zombies on speed. I'm telling you, that's how you got to do it. Anyway, no thinking. I don't want a defense thinking. I mean, if that old coach told me, I, believe it or not, old fat boy here, I was a corner, a cover corner. And you know what the coach told me? If you think you're beat, because the game is played in milliseconds. So I'm trying to think. I had reads. No problem. But when I was playing man coverage, I'm on that guy, and I'm telling you right now, I ain't thinking. I'm reacting. I'm not thinking what step, what hip. I'm not watching hips. I'm not doing it. I'm doing what comes natural to me, watching that flow of that receiver. And if that receiver, I can just tell by the way his balance is, then I can move with him, and I learn to cheat and push on him and grab, all that stuff. 
but I ain't thinking. And any time I thought I got beat, and even when I wasn't thinking I got beat, not hard for me not to think. Anyway, I'm pretty good at it. Risk versus reward on gas defense. Here's the way I look at it. First of all, the, deep, the offense don't set the tone. I do. As a defensive corner, I let that offense know they are not going to run the table on us. We're the ones going to run the table on them. And they get a lot, off a lucky pass on us. If they throw a, a, an air ball up and it's a 50-50 and the guy out jumps my guys, and that's fine. You know, you, we got it. But I will take the risk. And the reward is either, and I look at it this way, it's going to be a turnover or a touchdown. That's the way we play. I like it. Anyway, again, you got to have the dogs. This is not a fat boy defense. You are not going to go out there with a bunch of slow, fat kids and try to play gas defense. Ain't going to happen. And you better have some rotation because kids get tired. High school players get tired. Remember, because I'm referring to them as kids, doesn't mean I'm not talking about high school. I, t I coach high school the same way. All right, there's my boy right there. You see that? That is your typical offensive line. Now, he's a nasty bastard. I'm telling you right now, this guy loves to step on your throat. And you see him pointing. You know why? Because he wants to know where everybody's at. He's been taught on every play to recognize the mic, recognize the nose, recognize the three. I'm talking that stuff because you guys know what I'm talking about. You for this guy, you know what? You want know mess that guy up there? It's big and it's tough. And look, he's probably a straight A 4 0 student. You want know mess him up? Move. Before the ball snap, move. Oh, it drives him crazy. You know why? Them boys are OCD. They can't stand it. If you got something out of place, it just drives them crazy. And guess what happens? Now he's thinking. What I tell you about thinking? If you take time to think, you're beat. So keep that in mind. All right, you got to develop hitters. It, it, dude, remember I told you about unnatural behavior? you got to find some kids out there that have been taught, know how to hit as safely as possible, and love the feel of contact. There's not a lot of kids out there like that, but they are. Get you three or four on one team as a youth league, and you'll win championships. Get you five or six, you'll win state championships. Get seven or eight, and you're probably going to be coaching uh, college somewhere because they're going to find out how you're doing it. Based on speed, man. Like I said, no fat boys. You want to get you a fat nose and put him in there? Nah, I'm not even for that. Nah, nah. I, like I told you, I'm not, a, I'm not a gap guy. He'll take up two gaps. He'll take up both A gaps. I don't give a damn about both A gaps. I want somebody's going to fly through them gaps and knock somebody's ass off. Not sit there and wait on them to hit them. Not nah, know that. Hey, look, they might have their place in something. I don't know. I, I'm i fat guy, right? Even though I was a defensive back, I'm, I was fat as a defensive back, to be honest with you. <sighs> now, nah, that, that, cat, that kid can't play defense. All right, you can't tip. When I mean about tipping and false stepping, the way you're going to run gas defense, and I'm going to show you in a minute, the, remember what I told you about offensive linemen? They cannot know where you're going. And if you stack, that's what this is, a stack defense. If I stack, they got to be looking, talk about unnatural, they got to be pelvic to butt on each other, linebacker right up on that on that uh, uh, D lineman. And I mean, they, they, it's got to be invisible. The, the, the offensive linemen should not even be able to see, Harley, that linebacker to stack behind him. I run a 2-2 stack. So they should be stacked so close together that you can't even see them. That confuses the D.O. line because you're never going to come from the same place twice. All right, you got to change your language, man. Like I said, we've already went over the language and all that. Talk where the kids can understand it. You might have a brilliant football player. I had one this spring. He's a brilliant football player. He, he if he keeps his grades up, he will be a two-star. Oh, no, probably a three-star, four-star. He won't be a two-star. He might even make a five-star. I don't know. He's either going to be a prisoner in college. I don't know. He's going to play pro or something. But that kid, you, he doesn't know what a three-tech is. He doesn't know what a two-tech is. You know what I say? Head up on the guard, outside shoulder to guard, inside shoulder to guard, outside shoulder to center. Dude, don't try to be all technical with these guys. Sure, you want to teach them. You want to get them ready for upper-level football. But do it in stages. You're already throwing a new defense at them, so they're trying to think of that. And remember what I tell you about defensive guys? I'm not saying we're stupid. We're not smartest guys in the world. You know why? We have poor attention spans. Most guys that play defense, we can't stay on con on task very long. We, our, our mind drifts. So that offensive guy, he can sit there. He, he can do calculus in his head while he's playing football. Us defensive guys, I, I, all of a sudden I'm starting thinking, who's up in the stands? And you know, that's it. You got to stay those guys focused, right? Don't tell them to read. Develop a rotation, man. If you're going to have a good gas defense, a gas defense will gas you. 
that will gas your players. And it's not hard to do. You don't need superstars out there. You just need hitters, fast hitters, and they ain't got to be big. I, all right, this is a picture of my defensive line. And the reason it's interesting, I'm telling you right now, that defensive line right there, I wouldn't be afraid to put up against most high schools. But we're running the 2-2 stack. And let me tell you what it is. Let me show you this. This is the offensive line on the right with the yellow helmets. My guys are in the gray, and they're coming off. Here's what's critical. You see, my guys are fully engaged. They are 100 miles an hour. There's no reading. There's no thinking. They know where they're going. That offensive line don't. Look where the offensive lineman's feet are. Look where my guy's feet are. Better yet, look where the offensive lineman's hands are. Look what my defensive lineman's hands are. They're up. They're going into the chest area. They're getting ready to shed. They're getting ready. They're getting after some asses. That offensive line, that was a bigger, supposedly better team we were playing. And let me tell you something. They wanted no part of this defense. And although that wasn't our base defense, I'll run that until they stop it. Then I'll go to base. Guess what? They didn't stop it all game. It was it was great. And you see the guy right there in the in the very middle. It looks like he's playing a, uh, the nose. He's really playing a two tech. But anyway, most teams would have made him a safety or a quarterback. But that's the nastiest dude I've ever seen. Fast, crazy, loves to hit. No, no, he'll give an offensive lineman trouble. So you know what they do? They they maybe maybe they maybe they condense their line. No splits, right? Guess what? That frees your defensive end up. So, like I said, that's to be – if your players aren't – and look, take photographs and then take snags like this and look at your defense and look at your offense and see where their feet are when the ball is snapped. And if they're like this offensive line here, then you know what? You're coaching right as long as you're coaching defense. <laughs> so, got hand placement, got everything. You and, I mean, everybody's engaged. Now, here's a 2-2 two -two stack. All right, I'm going to talk to technical shit with you guys because you know it. All right, on this particular, we got a two-by-two two two on the offense, and we've got uh, we got two defensive ends. I call it what you can put a strong side in. There's a whole lot of names you can put on. I know we all have different nomenclatures for these guys, but I'm just going to call them two five techs. Now, these guys, they need to be fast, long, hard hitters. They also have to be very intelligent, and they're the only two guys on the defense that has to be patient. The reason I say they have to be patient is if that offensive tackle blocks down, the biggest mistake the defensive end makes is going upfield. He has to be on the shoulder of that offensive tackle, and if the offensive tackle steps down, he has to step down with him and squeeze with his eyes in the backfield looking for a puller. Because if once that defensive end goes upfield, you've just created a gap. Gas is not gap control. Gas is attacking, but it's also covering the gaps while attacking it. So we don't want to leave any 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 open areas, any gaps, any uh avenues for that running back to get on and this is where i call the kill box you see that box right there you're going to have i call them guards because you can call them two techs uh three techs tackles noses They're only for the simple reason that there's really it's not a position for them because these guys are hybrids they're just strong mean ass fast linebacker type strong safety type kids but they can move and I put two badass linebackers in here with speed. I don't want no fat mics in there. I'm not filling holes. Okay? And you stack them right on top of each other. I mean, dead on top of each other. Because if they're leaning one way, that offensive line sees it. That offensive guard sees it. All of a sudden, you got old Dr. Einstein there playing offensive guard. Okay, I know where he's at. I got his ass. You know, you don't want that. You don't want him to know where you're going. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't be able to see him. Yeah, that... Uh, that film kind of jumped time anyway over there, so I'm going to try to catch back up. I don't know how much we lost on this, but we'll get back on it. But anyway, we're still on a 2-2 stack. i got two five techniques. Hey, you got your rover, your wheel, just linebackers, and I've got one free safety, yada, yada. We'll go over it. But let's put it in motion here. We already know that we have the pinch and we have the uh, uh, wide, and we're covering both A and B gaps, and C gaps already covered because we got the defensive ends there squeezing down, not attacking until they find the ball. And that right there was our, uh, uh, our wide. That's our pinch. Now we're going to throw a little monkey wrench at him, and I call this Diablo. Let's see if I can pick it up. And that's the delayed reaction. But what happens is, if you can see it, is we're crossing the middle backers. Because once the offensive line gets used to seeing that, they're going to start pretty much recognizing. Remember, they're smart guys. And all of a sudden, I cross them up with Diablo, and that's going to get them as well. Uh, one of the other things that I think that is, is interesting, you can line up and stack you got the offensive lineman thinking they've got your number, and then we give the signal off. 
and that just means that your uh, two guards can either take A gaps or B gaps, and your linebacker just back off, and you'll do that a lot of times, especially on passive situations where you'll drop into zones like hooked curl or, or whatever, and you might want to be buzzing your rovers and your wheels and ah, all that stuff. But anyway, pretty much again, and that's delayed reaction, but that's that's exactly what we want. We want the Diablo look. If they roll in motion, no matter what, we're going to shift over. Now, what I just did, that's a typical rotation. When they're running two by two, sometimes they're going to send a jet. Uh, it doesn't matter on your on your stack movement. We're still going to have the stack um, uh, gas in place, but we're going to roll the secondary. And I don't like traveling. I don't want the uh, the rover to run with him. I mean, some guys do, but I don't. I think it's just easier to roll the wheel up, uh, pull the free safety down, and then you're running a uh, uh, either cover two and buzzing the wheel or whatever you want to do with your secondary or or man over a lot of you can go quarters you can play a lot of stuff like that my guess is though if you still look we still have them significantly outnumbered as long as the ends are squeezing and not creating lanes that kill box is still rolling so like I said when I talk about how the unnatural stack is because it's kind of funny. It's like a quarterback and a center relationship. That's how I want the backers and the guards setting up. And it, I call it replacing the, the butt cheek. So when I call a false step, you'll have a linebacker that uh, normally lines up right behind him. And if the guard fires off, let's say he's on a wide, so he's going wide, then that linebacker has to replace his right cheek. What a false step is, if that linebacker takes a step backwards and then goes, that's a false step. You'll see defensive ends do that a lot, but that's not in this situation. Or you'll see the linebacker round it. Let's say we have a pinch on, so that guard is going to go inside, and your uh, your linebacker is going to come right off his left cheek. He's got to, he can't round it. If he tries to run around it, it gives the offensive line time to do it. So when I say a lot of you think you run this, you really don't. What you do is you run it improperly and if you're not has to be practiced every day that four guys in the kill box need to be like a choreographed dance they need to be firing right off each other's ass and i mean it needs to be coming in hard and quick and low and all that stuff but if they round it off or take false steps or if you catch yourself a willy pig out there a whistle pig pull his ass out and set him down he cannot play this defense when they get tired They'll start doing me rat shit on you. They'll start standing up and looking. That's when you know your player's tired or he's just not suited for it. So there again, that's the relationship you do not want. Your linebackers too, because they they, they run this stuff we call chaos where they bounce in and out. That's cool, but if we haven't called chaos, they're going to be stationary stacked. So if they're not stacked, if you've got a linebacker doing this, well, that's just telling me right now that's a wide because the guard's going to go outside, the linebacker's going to go inside, and the offensive lineman, if I see it, hell, the offensive lineman sees it. They're smarter than me. I told you that. And here's, like I said, you once he takes that, let's say that he's playing the left guard. Once that defensive uh, guard takes that right foot step and starts to uh, charge in off of the, the wide, uh, the the pinch position that linebacker needs to shoot straight off of that left cheek i mean he's got to shave that left cheek no false state or nothing and he can't go around it see that little round arrow he can't do that these are the mistakes people make when they're coaching linebackers and a stack defense this is what creates this that's two linebackers meeting at the same time because the entire line blocked down on the uh, guards that's what happens when you that's also what happens when you end the film too early so I hope this thing catches it at the end. hope you guys got something out of it. I uh, hope, uh, hope this helps just a little bit. If nothing else, learn how to talk to kids in kid language. Learn how to speak kiddish. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Thanks. Thanks for your time.